Okay, we do a very simple, a very simple design lecture today. So we're gonna we're gonna do a little bit of design for beams. Okay. And if you recall, um, we had this equation sigma is equal to m minus my over i and then we said that we often just dump all the geometry into the section modulus and then we end up with m m over s okay so this particular equation can be manipulated in a very simple manner for design by simply saying given some allowable stress what is the section modulus so then we have m over sigma where now this will be some sigma allowable and then uh, usually for just to be conservative we'll take some maximum moment so find the section modulus and these are usually tabulated for example for different beam cross sections the section modulus is tabulated in the back of the book and so if you can determine m max and you're given sigma allowable, you can determine the section modulus that would be required to carry the load such that the stress is underneath was less than sigma allowable. If for a rectangular cross section, if you, if you remember, then the distance from the top, from the neutral axis to the top or the neutral axis to the bottom is the same. But if that's not the case, then you would have different distances, C1 and C2. And so you would have to actually examine both of those in order to determine max or mins for stress. Okay, just keep that in mind. Um, and when we, when we talk about design, what we're really wanting to determine is the lightest, usually it's the lightest beam that can carry the load. That's what we're after. And so that begs the question, what are good cross sections, right? Because you could, you could have a beam of the same length and all kinds of different cross sections. If you notice, what we've got here is the most efficient cross-section for a given um, uh, yeah so what you want is for a given for a given maximum bending moment you want the section modulus to be efficient such that um, the if the section modulus goes up, that means the allowable stress goes down, right? And that's what you want. That's an efficient beam, is one where, given a, a constant maximum bending moment, um, the section modulus is optimized such that the stresses that develop are minimized. I'll say that again. Given a, a, a constant bending, maximum bending moment, an efficient cross section is one where the sec section modulus is maximized while the allowable stress or the stress in the beam is minimized okay and so the way that we do that is notice to make s big you want i to be big right because this is usually just going to go to the outs like the the bottom or top of the beam Okay, and so you really want this to be big. And so how does the moment of inertia get big? Well, the moment of inertia is essentially measuring, if you have a neutral axis, let's say, okay, let's say you have a circular cross section. It's a measuring how efficiently the material is distributed on the top and the bottom of the neutral axis. So this wouldn't be very efficient, right? Because you have most of the material actually is close to the neutral axis. So rectangular cross section is a little more efficient you have a little more material up here but what you really want for beam bending is something 
like what we call an I-beam, and that's why we have I-beams, is because they are primarily to carry bending, okay? And the way that we do it is we put almost all of the material as far away from the neutral axis as we can, so S gets big, and then it can carry the bending moments very efficiently. We don't waste any material in here. And so that's why I-beams are efficient for bending. They're efficient for bending. They're optimized, engineered for bending. Okay, so these are all principles of design, right? So we're just trying to find a way to maximize the cross-sectional properties so that we minimize the stress that develops throughout the beam. And over the years, different designs have been proposed. The I-beam is probably the most famous structural member for carrying uh, bending uh, in a beam like loading. So let's just look at a problem now. It talks, it does this. Um, let's say, just for kicks, we've got something like beam. Look at this. We've got this load here. This load here. Um, they're both magnitude 2,000 pounds per foot. And then this one goes 12 feet. This is 3 feet. Not very well. The scales are pretty off. These are the dimensions. And so what we want to do now is a particular design problem where we want to consider the loading and, this is not something we've done before, the self-weight of the beam, how much the beam weighs. We've been designing so far assuming that the weight of the beam was not part of the loading, and it is. Especially for massive beams, the weight is a very significant part of the load that's carried. So we want to consider both of those um, let's assume that sigma allowable is 18,000 psi, and we want to do a wide flange I-beam. We want to select a wide flange I-beam using the section modulus S, right? So that's all tabulated in the appendix in the book. Okay, so the first so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to neglect self weight. So we neglect self neglecting self weight. We're going to determine m max. Okay. All right. Then we're going to determine Determine S of given sigma allowable. Okay, but now so we know that this cross section here will work for the beam if we if we ignore the weight. So what we have to do now is once we've selected the beam, we have to add the weight back in at step one and then go through the process again. So we determine S. Once we've determined S, we go ahead and select the actual beam. Okay, and we have width, the weight known. We compute a new M max. And then we determine if the beam is still satisfactory, if the beam still works. And if it doesn't, then we have to go one step up in beam size and start over again, right? So we'll have a new weight, and etc. So this is an iterative process. Iterative 
means we take iterations until we converge to a solution. So it's an iterative process. Design is always iterative. So if we look at this particular problem, the first thing we do is we figure out m max, okay, neglecting weight. And again, I'm not going to do the statics. I'm going to let you guys work on the statics on your own. In this case, m max neglecting the weight is 88,920 pound feet. Okay, and so S then is going to be M max over sigma allowable. Sigma allowable is given right here. Okay, and so that gives us an S of 59.3 inches cubed. So we go in the back of the book and find a wide flanged I beam whose S is at least 59.3. And so that means we select W1250. And again, we want the minimum weighted. We don't, you can pick a huge one that will work, but you want to try and find the one that's most efficient. Okay, now we have to redo the M max calculation because this has weight. Okay, so we redo M max and we get a new M max equal to 91,620 feet, pound feet. Okay, so you can see it's not a huge change. And if you compute S now from that new M max over sigma allowable, it requires a slightly larger section modulus. Um, but you'll notice that this still this still works for this S, okay? Because the S that we picked, um, where is it? This guy here. The S is 60, I believe it's 64.2 inches cubed. Okay, so that's the S. So it's it's actually more massive than, than theoretically required, but you get them usually in a standard manufactured shapes. So as long as we're less than 64.2 after adding the weight, we're good. So that's just a very simple way of doing design. Um, I would encourage you to go through this problem and do all of the statics if you're still struggling with statics. I won't spend a lot of lecture time reviewing statics, but there are a lot of opportunities throughout my lectures to stop, my stop the recording and work through the statics, make sure you get the same answers.